Welcome back to this video of Pure Data tutorial series and finally we're getting to get to know some useful things. We dealt with numbers all the time and introduced to expressions and to sub patches to sending, receiving, typing values and variables and 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 so forth. But in the end we need useful little patches and useful little functions we want to uh, process. Now we start with this. In this first video we want to look at uh, counting routines because when you code or you want to structure something you need control over the processing order okay we already know that and you need control over for example iterations or do this for 10 times or things like that or do this only um, in a row like a cycling of eights or something so we will look at counting up and down now because it's very important and doing cycles with the modular object. So first, counting. We know there's a floating point object. This stores just a number. And we know there's the add object. And this is a routine you should totally keep in mind and never forget it again, because it is your best friend for all the time. We do a bang button because this little structure just counts up or later on down. We output the floating point number directly to the adding and the result of the add we just put back into the cold inlet of the float atom. In this way we create a little cycle which when we bang it is always counting up because this one now by one. If we execute it, we get zero and a one and a two and a three and a four and so on. And this little structure is super useful just to count up because the float, the result is added with one. This result is fed back into here. And of course, we can count up and down. If we want to count down, of course, we use minus one. And now we have the structure for counting down by one. And of course we can do count up by 10, like now we are stepping on 10th and you get the idea and so on and so forth. If we want to reset, we just need a message zero and feed this into the code inlet of the float atom. So if we hit zero, the expression is resetted and we can count up again. Zero and count up zero and count up again. To automate this, we can use the select function. This does, for example, uh, we want to select 10. If a 10 is recognized, this outputs a bang. We just make a print and then we see um, if our counter reaches 10, it outputs a bang. So that's very helpful because you know bang just triggers something and what we want to do if we only want to count to 10 of course then we reach 10 we want to send the zero to reset the structure. So we reset it to start 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and it's reset it. So in this way we can now cycle nicely around 0 and 10 all the time. And because this structure is a little bit bulky and a little bit ugly and super messy, you see the need why I always try to avoid all those cores. And what you can do, of course, is use subpage pd add one, then you just use this x, drawing x, hide it there. And of course, you need inlet and outlet and maybe a second inlet for resetting if you want to manually reset and then you have the function add one here we go add one it's always adding one and if you want to for example reset manually you just connect the bank to the second uh, inlet reset and it starts here from there otherwise it's cycling around zero 
and 10. Again, because it's so important and so often used, the structure is like this. Floating atom and add. Then I go zoom in, you connect outlet to inlet, outlet to cold inlet, and then for the result, get a number box and up there something to feed it like the bang button. And for resetting the whole equation, all you need to do is feed in a zero right into the cold inlet of the float atom to stop cycling up and down.